Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Coach Grossman Dynasty here on NCAA 14, featuring that college football revamp, of course. We got a good one in store once again as we get to restore a rivalry game that we didn't get to play last year. Even though we were in the same conference, the American Conference does not protect rivalry, so it was what it was. But now that the UCFs in the Big 12 were in the American, we can uh, schedule them as our non-conference opponent every year. You know, nothing uh, you know to worry about. But we got a good game in store for us here, man. War on I-4. One of our most important games of the season, man. We, you know, take on a UCF squad that's six and five. They are bowl eligible, but they stumbled a little bit in conference play. They're four and five in the Big 12. We're undefeated in American with a nine and two record. And we Corso's rocking with us, but we do have similar overalls at the end of the day. And we are missing Ben Archie. Archie is out for the next three weeks. He's actually hurt pretty bad. So we do not have him in this game. We will be, you know, relying on guys like, you know, you know, uh, Kenneth Simmons, uh, Chuck Silva uh, might get some action as the backup running back for us. He's our backup running back right now. Um, so yeah, man, we got some work to do. I'm excited for this episode. You know, the War on I-4, you know, one of the lesser known rivalries in college football, but not lacking in importance so let's get it out there get it done smash that like button hit subscribe if you have to be brand new hit that noti bell on top of it let's go ahead and get into this man the war on i4 let's bring it home so let's go ahead and jump right into it the war on i4 and both of us gonna be rocking those alternate jerseys this could be trouble Jalen Stokes does get him from behind, but man, we got ourselves a little bit lucky there. My man had a convoy. If he didn't run into people, that could have definitely have been a touchdown for sure. But right now, UCF is putting together a really good drive. They drove deep into UCF territory. And matter of fact, we're going to see Keen get a little bit loose here. It's Chase, but it's fumbled, and Kevin Lott's going to recover it. Let's go, baby. So UCF on their very first drive of the game has a really impressive drive. Their first couple plays were fantastic, but that was Kevin Watt that got in there, forced the fumble. And now here we are rocking and rolling here as we go ahead and jump in on another first and 10. We unfortunately could not do anything with that drive. So now we are here with a second and short as we have our defense back out on the field offense still hasn't really produced much of anything so far and that's the sad thing of what could happen when your defense is out on the field most of the time starting to see those missed tackles early hopefully that's not a priest cursor for a potential upset alert as covington takes it up a gun we see a nice shot by jordan smith he got a really good tackle there but a third and short, nonetheless, trying to get him off the field here. As Roosevelt McDonald, he runs across the field and is able to chase down James Chase. That was a fantastic job of getting them out, you know, into a fourth down. They will be going for it here. And Keen, I don't even know what that pass is. That is absolute hot garbage. But that is going to go ahead and at least get another stop on defense, man. So we got first and 10 here. Trying to get something going with our passing game as we're just struggling really to get anything going here in this game early. We throw an incompletion off the drop pass there. And then hopefully on second and 10 we can do something here. We actually do, though. Nathan Steffens finally does go ahead and give us our very first first down of this game so now we got another first and ten trying to try to build off of it as Timmy McClain does end up getting us into UCF territory for the first time UCF with two chances but they did not get anything going you know in terms of getting points on the board as we're trying to set up the screen but it's broken up by Kevin Simmons just nowhere to go for him and now a third and seven Offensive coordinator wants to go halfback screen again. 
This time we head to the guys there for the blocks. But he gets deflected at the line of scrimmage. And we did have to go ahead and punt this football away once again. So now here we are still. Nobody has scored yet in this game. It has still been, you know, a pretty defensive matchup. You're a guy that loves defense. And this episode, definitely for you so far as Keen going to roll out to the left. And he almost gets pummeled. That was, I believe, Marvin Jackson that got in there and laid the hit on the lumber. And a third and 14 as a result as we get Keen under center. Going to drop back. Uh, might be a screen, but it's a throw at the last second to Ain Amelia. And he's down the field. 40, 30, 25 before he's finally caught from behind by Jordan Smith. As one of the most dangerous things that a quarterback can do is throw an underthrown ball. Defensive backs have a hard time adjusting to that at times. And that was something that we really saw right there. And it led to a massive gain as a result of it. Plus, timely blocking definitely helps as well. And now, for the first time today, the UCF Knights, they are in the maroon zone. And now inside the 10 as we see Josh Covington take a big run down the left-hand side. So goal line situation for the UCF Knights. Looking for the first touchdown of the game as Covington trucking through a couple of defenders and gets into the end zone. Touchdown, UCF. And we are done with one quarter of play. We do end up seeing the Knights take a 7-0 lead here early on. And right now the war on I-4 definitely looking in the favor of our rivals to the south as now third and long coming up McLean trying to get something going with the offense hopefully that can spark us a little bit as Tyler Ray does pick up a 15 yard catch downfield we'll see if we can build off of it first and 10 McLean over the middle was trying to find Nathan Steffens but the ball gets undercut and it's going to be an interception. 45 was just sitting on it. And just an easy play to make, apparently. And now our defense is in trouble. Keen going to take it off the scramble. It's a read option down the right-hand side. And it's going to be a first down for the UCF Knights. And looking to extend this 7-0 lead. As we got a five-wide set. Trips to the right. As we got a man in motion now. It's Mason. Going to move to the left-hand side. Keen looking down the right-hand side. But it's going to be caught by Titus Intamilia. And we catch a little bit of a break there. We do force a field goal. But that being said, though, down 10 to nothing. And still struggling to get that offense going. We couldn't get any sort of response. We go free and out once again. So now, third and 14 again. They've already converted Wong. One Wong, third down, and they're going to get a second one. Man, how are we going to let somebody open right at the sticks of the first down marker? We are in a zone. Now I'm supposed to take away that zone, but that really did not happen there. You absolutely hate to see it. So third and long coming up as Keen. It looks like it's a screen pass. Trying to get it out to the halfback, but the just... Never got rid of the ball. I don't know what was going on there. I'm not going to complain as Jamari Stewart does end up with a free rush at the quarterback. I'm actually really shocked that he was not able to get a fumble out of it somehow. I mean, Jamari Stewart, he's a big, strong man. No doubts about that. But we do get to stop on defense. Let's see if our offense can finally get on the board. Still waiting for our first score. The game is that's almost intercepted. He was looking to the left-hand side, but that does end up being broken up by Corey Pritt Jr. And it sets up second and 10. McLean to the right. Find Spencer Tate at the very least. And it will get us back across that 50-yard line. Is now third and two, setting up a screen again. Third time that we try to run this play. And hey, maybe third time is the charm, though, as Kenneth Simmons is able to get himself a first down. First successful attempt in free tries with that screen pass. And maybe we'll find a little bit of a rhythm, except we throw behind. 
That is our 99 overall quarterback throwing behind on our receiver, man. Sometimes everything just goes right for you when you play this game. And other times, like right now, it just seems like anything that could go wrong is currently going wrong. So, third and five. McLean looks left. Thought he had a man, but he intercepts it. It's Adams. It's a second interception for Timmy McLean on the day. We were looking for Nathan Steffens. But an overthrow might have cost us dearly. And now we get into the danger zone. UCF. Looking to create a commanding lead here as Keen. It's going to be a hand. No, it's going to be Keen keeping it himself. He breaks a couple of tackles. Greedy Nugent, last line of defense, finally does catch up to him. But now across midfield as the bounce house is certainly bouncing here, man. One of the tougher, actually more underrated places in college football. I've always enjoyed the bounce house personally as Greg Scales. Gets a nice carry up the right-hand side. Is now second and three. Keen under shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Covington. Looks like a halfback base move. And Covington picks up a 12-yarder. And another first down that will at least get the Knights into field goal range. But they're thinking more. Keen with some time. Finds Warren, but Warren drops it for him. And I don't know if it's something to do with this rain or... It's just not great mental focus, but neither quarterback really able to get much of a rhythm as we see a second drop for him. So now third and ten. And this is a strength of USF. Able to pin the ears back. Our pass rush is pretty good. Keen got some time to work with. Scrambles to the left. Somehow breaks the tackle and finds Warren. You cannot be serious right now. Somehow breaking that tackle. Keeps his eyes on the field, looking forward. And a huge play because of it. You have to love the patience. And it leads to another touchdown for the UCF Knights. As Central Florida takes a 17 to nothing lead on the number 15 team in the entire country. And we are in some serious trouble right now upset alert the alarm bells are certainly ringing and also not surprised that at least UCF is giving us at least some fits I was hoping to play a tad bit better than this obviously but I mean these rivalry games you never know what can happen really truly anything is absolutely possible is now second and ten coming up McLean trying to lead his troops down the field Looking right, going to jump it off to Trey Myers for a little five-yard gain. We will have to take our first time out. So this third down becomes big. Got to be able to pick this up. We need it in a worse way. McLean looking, actually facing pressure though. Trying to throw it across his body, and that's almost intercepted. Corey Platt Jr. almost got his second pick of the game, and that's how this first half is going to end. Right now, not looking good for us. Down 17 to nothing at the half. So let's go ahead and get this second half now officially underway. And we need a drive, man. We need a touchdown in the worst way. Just getting nothing in that first half offensively definitely put us in a really tough spot. So we need a drive, man. We need to get down this field. And we need to score. We need to get ourselves back in this game as Nathan Steffens takes an absolute shot. We're at least moving the ball forward. That is something that we have not really done in this first half as Ken M. Simmons, he's able to go ahead and run it upfield for a gain of 12. So a first and 10 for USF. We got a second down here. Going to try to pick it up with a speed option as Tim McLean, you know, he does a good job. He goes ahead. He makes sure that it's a more manageable third down at the very least. So let's see if we can pick it up with the run game. Simmons in the backfield. Going to try to run for the first down. Marco, but Simmons can't get there. It's fourth and one. And you know what? We need to go for it. We need some sort of momentum. I cannot punt this football away. Give it to the fullback. As Ware finds his way to the first down marker. That's what I'm looking for, man. Stefan Ware. Getting that first down, tough running too while we're at it. 
And we'll see if that can spark our football team as Trey Myers, he almost gets to the first down marker again. A 10-yard grab for him. Really only his second catch of the entire day so far. This entire offensive group. It's been held down recently as Simmons going to pick up another first down. But taking a lot of time off the clock as well. Already a third of the way through this quarter. Approaching honestly halfway through this quarter. And this is still the same drive that we started with in the second half. We did receive the ball. We did defer to the second half. So we at least have that. But yet another fourth down. We got the first fourth down conversion. Can we get the second one? McLean. He's going to try to run for it. Makes a man miss. Okay, let's go, Timmy McLean. That's what I'm talking about, baby. As we are now halfway through this quarter. And we're looking to finish off this drive as McLean under shotgun. We'll get over the middle for Tom Ray. But it's going to be dropped as Ray had a chance to make a big play there. It's going to end up being second and goal instead. Going to hand it off to Simmons. And Simmons finally gets this on the board, man. Touchdown, USF, baby. Let's go, man. 17-7 is your score as of right now. And look at that. We end up going ahead and getting ourselves a free and out. As now we see Spencer Tate down the sideline. Managed to pick up a gain of 21. So, on, so we do end up getting that free and out. That is what we're looking for. So let's see if we can use this to make this a one score game. Steffens going on the jet sweep. Bounces off a tackle or two. We pick up a decent amount of yardage. And yet we got a holding called on us, man. Trey Myers is going to be the guilty party. And we lose four yards off rip. We'll see if uh, Kenneth Simmons can get some of that back for us. And falls the blocks, man. And we get back to the original marker. And we pick up some more yards. So a manageable second down. Great run by Kenneth Simmons. So good that we're going to run it with him again. Going to hand it off to him over the middle. Kenneth Simmons falling forward and picking up that first down for us. First and 10 coming up for us here. It's now second and seven coming up. Speed option. McLean following the blocks, trying to get to the first down. Marker, and it's almost manages to get there. Just one yard short. You think we're going to run it again? No. See if we can hit him with this play action here, actually, as McLean got... Actually, he's going to have to run for it and has to throw it away. But you know what? We're two for two on these fourth down conversions. And I really want to go ahead and make it free for free. As McLean finds an open Spencer Tate on the crossing route. And, dude, we only need one more yard to pick up the first down. Dude. Easy stuff, man. No problem whatsoever. Is now number first and ten. McLean over the middle. Finds Trey Myers. Trying to reach that first down marker. But won't get there, though. But a nice gain once again as our offense has really started to show signs of life. McLean on the pitch. Simmons down the sideline is brought down. Gain of ten for Kenneth Simmons. And another first and ten. As McLean going to go ahead, hand it off again. Looking for the first down marker. Only picks up a gain of five. As that does wrap up the third quarter, we're playing significantly better. However, we're down by 10. In the next few plays in this fourth quarter, it's going to be huge. Let's see if we can make this comeback happen, man. So let's go, baby. Fourth quarter now officially getting ourselves underway. As McLean's going to go ahead and keep it on the speed option. And he gets a wide but naked open lane. And Tim McLean finds himself into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Florida. And it's now just a three-point game. And now we put the pressure on UCF. They still have this lead from their great start in the first half. But we got the pressure on them now. But you already know... These Golden Knights, man, they are not going to go down without a fight, man. As we jump into a second and ten. Keen looking over the middle. Finds Greg Scales. And Greg Scales almost 
manages to reach that first down marker. Not quite, but he was very close, though. Is now third and one. Keen going to go ahead and take it off of the handoff as Mikey Keen makes it fourth and inches. He does not reach the marker. And let's go, man. We get the ball once again. First and ten. McLean looking over the middle. We got a receiver. It's Adam Covington. It's a foot race. Is he going to reach the end zone? Don't get caught. Oh, he got caught from behind. Oh, my goodness. But, yo, biggest play of the game, though. But can we do something with it? Third and 11. Trying to reach the first down marker. Spencer Tate breaks one. Breaks a second. Almost getting to the end zone. He was trying to spin his way in there. But that was a big one as well. Is now instead of tying the game, we're going to be able to take our first lead of the game as Tim McLean is going to go ahead and run this thing into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Florida. And with five minutes left to play, we have our very first lead of this entire game. But can we make it last forever as we had men wide open? But thankfully, we saw Brandon Adams and company get a deflection. And now third and long. Come on, let's get him off the field. Keen. Oh, we could not keep him from getting that first down marker. Ken Morris able to make the catch. As now it's another first and 10 in the 4 2 5. Keen. Got a scales in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep to the left. Scales breaks one tackle, but Michael Jackson is able to get in from behind and make a play on the football. As now we got another second down coming up. Second and four. It's Keen handing it off down the right hand side. It's a pitch play. Houston falls on the ground. Grady Nugent coming to make the tackle from behind and just getting through here. And guys, if my voice sounds a little bit weaker than usual, I am recording this voice commentary as, oh, Stokes, why'd you do that to me, man? Come on now. We didn't even need that face mask. We had him in the backfield. Oh, my goodness. Now they're, So now they're in our territory. But yeah, man, if my voice sounds like a tad bit weaker than usual, that is because I am recording this shortly after the uh, exciting Bengals and Chiefs wow uh divisional cha championship game um you all y'all that follow the channel that know me well i am a big Bengals fan so it is as we get a nice little false start okay i see it i love it i love it but yeah man we had probably one of the best playoff weekends that i've seen in the nfl in a very long time and i can't wait to see how this afc and nfc championship goes really close games all four of them just like this game right here as Keen looking for a play to happen, but just runs out of time, though. And third and 23, trying to reach that first down marker. Keen dropping back, looking around, facing some pressure. Breaks one tackle, and we almost see the first down made. Ken Morris makes a fantastic play that makes it fourth and inches. And UCF's going to go for it, only needing one more inch. Keen going to go ahead, hand it off to Covington, but doesn't find any room. The defense stands up again. And with two minutes left to play, one time or one first down should very well get it done as Simmons does manage to go ahead and get that first down. And now UCF has to call their timeouts. They use their second one. And if we can get this first down, this would be game over. We find Myers, but he fumbles it. He fumbles the football. You got to be kidding me, bro. Myers fumbles it. And that should have been the end of the game right there. But now UCF has one final chance. Starting to drive it around the 45. Matamelia going to fight for the first down. Does get it. That's huge because UCF does not have any more timeouts. They are in a no huddle. Keen dropping back. Looks left. Finds a receiver in Sean Morris. He's going to be gunned down by Jordan Smith. And now in the red zone, just 15 yards away from retaking the lead. Keen 
looking over to the left, but it's intercepted. Jordan Smith able to get a foot down. And we are going to be able to complete the comeback as we are just going to go ahead and deal it out. Make sure nothing else happens here, man. And so the first time that we've seen the war on I-4 happen before our eyes, we end up winning this one by a final score of 21-17. to Definitely a classic of a rivalry game. So we check ourselves out of there after that win on I-4, and we did end up getting, you know, another commitment to join the squad. Joe Mark, you know, 64 overall corner, will be a little bit of a depth piece for us. We're still in a bunch of recruiting battles, you know, for guys like Chris Leetley, Jamar Jackson, uh, Greg Nixon, and Spencer White. So definitely a lot of work to be done on the recruiting end, but that win that we did end up having is going to get us into you know our double digit win season two times in a row for that now you guys are probably wondering why i didn't show the stats well my xbox froze at the end of the game but we did end up uh still winning by the same score we still won 21 to 17 so no harm no foul to say the least i know i got a couple of uh subscribers that are fans of ucf that might be a little bit dismayed to see their favorite team lose to uh yours truly but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, and hey, we found a way to get the job done, and we end up winning our 10th game of the season. All right, man, but we get to take ourselves to the American Conference Championship game, and we get ourselves a little bit of a top 25 matchup. We've taken on Tulsa, who's ranked number 24 in the nation. They're also 10-2, and two, so, and they have a really explosive offense as well, so I'm super pumped for this episode. I hope you guys are as well. And if you are, feel free to smash that like button. Hit subscribe as well if you have to be brand new. Shoot, even hit up that notification bell if you like what I'm doing because sometimes YouTube trips a little bit with how they send out videos. So with that being said, this is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. But I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.